Okay, what I'm gonna do in this video is go through how to do the check. What I'd like you to do is write these steps in the top right corner of the first page or where you ever, ever have a little bit of room. It might take, you might need to use this top and then this area in here. I'm just gonna go to a Word document. All right, here are the four steps. Uh, step one, you're gonna plug the left side of the equation into Y1. Step two, plug the right side of the equation into Y2. What I mean by left side and right side is what's on the left side of the equal sign, what's on the right side of the equal sign. Step three, uh, I'm gonna show you on the calculator, you're gonna hit the blue button second and then table set. And I'll show you here, second, table set, and you're gonna change this independent to ask. And then step four, you're gonna go to the table and I'll show you that. So if you need to pause the video, write these four steps down and then start it up again. Okay, so when we get to the actual check here, what we're going to do is this. All right, the left side of the equation is this. The equal sign is what kind of splits the equation. There's the left side of the equation. So I'm gonna sub plug that into Y1. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. And the right side of the equation, what's on the right side of the equal sign, that's gonna get substituted in or plugged into Y2. So make sure you have a calculator. So on your calculator here, let me split screen this if I can. Okay, so Y equals, we're gonna all use this shortcut for every fraction we get. So we're gonna go alpha Y equals, you should have an option to do a little fraction, numerator, denominator. So we're gonna do the square root, six, x plus four. Be careful here, there's a little right arrow. You have to hit that right arrow to get out of the square root. Then you're gonna do minus one, and that's gonna be divided by four. Hit enter, that's the left side of the equation. On the right side, we're just gonna type in that x. Now on your calculators, you're gonna go second table set, which is the window button. Basically, what we want to do is we want to input, we want to decide what x values we put in. So we're going to change this to ask. You got to hit enter so that it's flashing in bold. And then the last step, blue button, table. So it should be blank. So what we got, we got an answer of 3 eighths and negative 1 half. So we're going to put those in. 3 eighths, hit enter. We're just trying to see, do these columns match? Depending on what calculator you have, this might say 0.375. So 3 eighths is 0.375. So I'm just looking to see if these two columns are the same. 3 eighths is 0 0.375, 0 0.375. Those are equal, the Y1 and Y2. So that is a solution. Then I'm gonna do the negative 1 half that we got and I can see zero and negative 0.5. The blue and the red, these are not equal. So when I talk about my answers for this question, uh, and I come back here, we had x equals 3 eighths. That is a solution. x equals negative 1 half. That is not a solution. That is an extraneous root. So we're gonna cross that off, just like we did in our topic three when we had extraneous solutions and that x equals 3 eighths is going to be the only solution for this question. So that's the process that you're going to use to check. I do want to show you one other thing. You can go back up here after each question and just highlight what you want and click delete and it'll delete those and it'll freshen them up. So for the next question, after you check, you're going to have to clear these out and then plug in the new values for question two, question three, etc. So what I would like you to do now is work on questions number numbers uh, two through six and number 12. Two through six and number 12. So when you're done doing that, or as you're doing that, there is an answer key on the Google Classroom. Please make sure you utilize that. Please make sure you talk with each other, help each other. Uh, most of these are going to end up with quadratic equations that you need to get set equal to zero and you need to factor and solve. Uh, I just want to highlight for you, make sure in all of these questions, you're 
first step is to get the square root term by itself. So in a lot of these, you're going to need to figure out, okay, what steps do I need to do in order to do that before you can square both sides of the equation? Uh, all right, let me make sure I've done everything I want to. So what do we say? Two through six. Yep, we're good there. And then question 12. Okay, when you get to question 11 and 12, these are multiple choice. Actually, I'm going to add 11 to that too. These are all multiple choice. So you should be doing absolutely no like calculations. What you're going to do on question 11 and 12 is this. You're just going to plug this into Y1, plug this into Y2, and then go to the ask, plug in 5, see if that works. Plug in negative 2, see if that works. If it does, this is the answer. If it doesn't, this is not the answer. And you'll be able to tell real quick, 5 and negative 2. If neither work, then you're going to choose this. This empty brackets means no solution. Number 12 is a little different. They want 3 and 6 to both be solutions. So you're going to plug this into Y1. You're going to plug this into Y2. And then if you input the 3 and the 6 on the table and they both check, great. This is the answer. If not, try again. Then this becomes Y1. This becomes Y2. Go back. Check the three and the six. If they both work, this is the answer. If not, go on to choice three. So just re recapping, what you're going to want to do is questions numbers uh, two through six, 11, and 12. And you don't want to spend any more time than maybe about 120 at the latest working on those. The goal is that you can get through at least two of these questions and check them. If you get to 11 and 12, I'm not that worried because that is just multiple choice strategies. All right. In the next video, I will go over what to do next.